I'm Dr. Linda Gromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Today, we're going to be looking at microaggressions, what they are, and how to spot them. Over the next several videos, we're going to be looking at issues involving personal safety. So this week, we'll be looking at microaggressions, and later, we're going to be looking at cyberbullying, and then we'll look at physical safety. Trans people are more frequent targets than are their cisgender counterparts. So let's take a look at microaggressions, and this can be tricky. So we're going to start with a definition by Columbia University professor Daryl Sue Wing, and this comes from the reference Microaggressions in Everyday Life, Race, Gender, and Sexual Orientation, and I'll have the link for you in the comments section. Microaggressions are the everyday slights, indignities, put-downs, and insults that members of marginalized groups experience in their day-to-day -day interactions with individuals who are often unaware that they have engaged in an offensive or demeaning way. So most of us recognize it when somebody is coming after us with a weapon or saying something that's outright abusive, but microaggressions can be harder to recognize. They can be very harmful, especially when they add up again and again. So microaggressions can be subtle, but they add up. They may sound innocent. They can be delivered in a friendly manner. They can even sound like a compliment but they have the effect of reinforcing stereotypes, confusing the recipient, catching people completely off guard, and distancing one group of people from another. And these are the behaviors that foster discrimination. Let's look at five examples of microaggressions so we can learn how to spot them. Example one, what is said? Oh, you're trans, have you had the surgery? Well, why is this problematic? This assumes that all trans people have surgery. The comment's invasive. It's nobody's business at all. Um, if I'm entitled to information about you, it implies that I have more power than you do. I am more important than you. Does that make sense? Here's another example. You might have heard somebody say, he's gay, what a waste. And why is this problematic? Because it may imply that an attractive person is too good for a gay relationship, that being gay is less legitimate than a straight relationship, that an attractive man should be saved for a female partner. I've heard this before and it just feels odd. Example number three, what is said is you're so lucky, but what is problematic about this is that it can attribute a person's accomplishments to luck rather than their hard work, their talent, their efforts, and it can dismiss a person's achievements. Number four, what is said to a trans person, it is said, what's your real name? And why is this problematic? Because it can imply that a trans person's name is not real. It implies that a trans person's name is less legitimate than the name or gender assigned at birth. An example number five said to a trans person, you don't look trans, well, what does this mean anyway? What does this mean? Does it mean, what does it mean to look trans? Is this a compliment or a slight? It's confusing and it catches a person off guard and it does sort of feel like a judgment in some way. So do you see what I mean? Sometimes these comments are said in such a friendly way that you don't know if you're being flattered or being slighted. In our next video, after our question of the week, we'll look closer at how to respond to these microaggressions. This is an important topic and it's kind of a difficult one to get your arms around. I hope this information is helpful to you. Please like this video and do subscribe to my channel, Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.